at the Marriott on Harbor Drive. Joining me right now from Dating Associates is uh, John Dady and our political analyst with our, our state of San Diego this week. And John, it seems to be uh, that uh, today anyway, all the focus is on the Supreme Court, the national stories. I think everybody's holding their breath. Uh, there's several different decisions coming down, and literally, I, I know uh, quite a few San Diegans are holding their breath uh, for different reasons. So last week, we had the Supreme Court ruling on the the recess appointment power of uh, President Obama, and uh, and we found out that the president is not allowed to make a recess appointment if Congress is around. Huh? Who knew? Uh, that was- well. It's- it was a little. It was a little bit more restrictive than that. And the interesting part about that, Chris, is it was a unanimous decision. However, the conservatives on the court wanted to go further. Um, what the decision was was really just you can't do it for the way he did it, just with three day recess. But they said it is okay for a ten day recess. But clearly, this was a blow to the president. And I think the most important aspect of this is it set a precedent. And so. What Obama did is he tried to push it too far, too fast, and now his future predecessors are going to be hamstrung because he wanted to try to uh, pu- push it too far. So that is the, the the most important part of this, too, and it's not necessarily just President Obama. And I know that the people who are focused on the today uh, are going to say, President Obama broke the law, President Obama struck down. But what this has done now is it's set up guidelines for every president from here forward. Well, that's correct. And also, uh, as far as the short term, it's again, it's seen as a loss for the president and a win for conservatives because a lot of the decisions made by the labor board, which that this what this decision focused on on that particular appointment, they have to go back and revisit it and revisit. And the reason that's important is while they go and revisit all those decisions and revoke them, all the current decisions are on hold. And that that that's really going to delay a lot of the president's agenda as he goes into his last couple of years. Uh, John Dadian from Dating Associates or the state of San Diego. And John, before we talk any more about the other Supreme Court stuff, and I also want to talk about this, uh, the the congressional race all over the map, what the heck that means. Uh, the the one that really is, is sticking here in San Diego is whether or not the Supreme Court is going to hear the case the, of the, the, the Mount Soledad cross. In the past, they said no, but now they've been asked again, and the president has asked them to step up in this case. What do you think? You, are you seeing this? Do you get a, a, a sense that they may give a finality to that, to that case that's been going on for so many years? Well, to use the uh, phrase by uh, uh, President Ronald Reagan, I think myself and a lot of San Diegans are cautiously optimistic as far as what the decision is going to say. We'll we'll, we'll see what happens. One of the greatest things going into this decision is, you know, Mount Soledad has many events year-round, but two big ones, Veterans Day and Memorial Day. One of the greatest things going into this decision is last Memorial Day, where we had almost 1,000 people on mountaintop, is the fact that we had such a great MC. (laughs) <laughs> and we do appreciate you doing that oh yeah thank you very much i just appreciated the opportunity it is uh it is one that we're going to pay very close attention to and i'd have to believe that both sides of that argument uh both the the memorial association and those who are who are fighting to either take the cross down or to open it up to to other memorials i don't know exactly what they what they want uh but you would think that both sides of the argument uh, would like to have some finality to this, would they not? I mean, this is it just seems to go on and on and on. At some point, we have to have a solution, some closure, right? Well, again, the, the nervous part is if the Supreme Court doesn't hear it, then the lower court ruling stands, and that's not good for those who want to keep the cross up there. Yeah. All right. So uh, John Dating from Dating Associates, the Supreme Court's got a couple of other ones they're going to rule on today. In fact, I've got the SCOTUS blog up right now as I, I – paying attention to this one the uh, burwell versus hobby lobby is a biggie and then harris versus quinn which is one about whether or not uh, unions can force non-union members to help pay the legal costs of collective bargaining if the non-union members benefit from that uh, argument so we'll uh, we'll hear those verdicts those are supposed to come out here about seven o'clock or so but talk to me now about this uh, the the headline that the public station had 52nd congressional races uh, let's see donations in peters and demile congressional race all over the map what does that mean well, it, it, it means that there's, you know, sometimes you see specific blocks uh, that are contributing, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, blocks on issues or geographical blocks, et cetera. But they're getting contributions from all over the place. So they broke it down a little bit and, and did a pretty good analysis. One thing that I liked was that so far, and quite honestly, I think this is going to change, but so far the majority of contributions are coming in from within San Diego County. And I think that's good. But as this race heats up, it really is. It really 
is the only major congressional race in California, and it's one of the top five in the United States. You're going to see money pour in from all over, uh, I think, uh, between now and November. So is this this is going to come in from, from the, the big wigs, the nationals? There's going to be people in New York making donations to, to Peters or to DeMaio? There are going to be people from Florida and, and everywhere in between and making these giant donations? You're going to you're going to see two main areas. I think you're going to see individuals from outside the area because the parties are going to go to their big contributors and say this is important to us, help us. But also the parties themselves, and of course we all know the famous phrase: these independent expenditure committees from both within and outside the region. They're all going to pour in because again, you know th- this is. Uh, it looks like Republicans certainly are going to retain Congress, but Democrats want to pick up every seat they can. So they clearly have targeted this this without a doubt. Both parties have. All right. Uh, John Dadian from Dadian Associates. As always, John, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, fingers crossed here. We'll find out what the Supreme Court has to say. And and uh, then we'll be able to, to kind of kick that one around here next week. I look forward to talking to you, my friend. Don't call me back before any decisions this morning because I'll still be holding my breath. <laughs> John Dania from Daniel Associates here on uh, News Radio 600 Kogo. Well, we are. Yeah, we're waiting, waiting with bated breath, as it were. Um, while that Supreme Court decision.